This is a video on methyl malonic acidemia. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it either, fellow peer. Now back to methyl malonic acidemia. What even is that? This is a genetically inherited disorder that makes people unable to deteriorate proteins and fats. Thus, this only leads to the buildup of the acid in your blood. Some symptoms include lethargy, dehydration, seizures, and vomiting. The disorder also affects boys and girls equally, so it's pretty fair. Babies! Also, babies have to be checked for that disorder, too. Complete blood count, blood gases, or a pneumonia test is done. This is how parents make sure the baby doesn't develop any sort of brain disease from the disorder. Unfortunately, there is no cure for methylmalonic acidemia. But wait, there are treatments. Either you could get a liver or kidney transplant, which really helps with creating new blood cells and the breaking down of methylmalonic acid, or go on a low protein diet and then you'll have to take carnitine or cobalamine supplements. So this gene is specifically located on chromosome 2 in this exact spot. Now to go more in depth with a genetic explanation. So there is another gene called the MUT gene which actually provides instructions for making methylmalonyl-CoA mutase and that is an enzyme that helps with the breaking down of amino acids and fats and all the other good stuff. The only problem is that if there's ever a mutation within the MUT gene, that just means there's going to be an overproduction of methylmalonyl-CoA, which is actually very similar to the mutase. And so, if there's too much of methylmalonyl-CoA inside of organs and tissues, that's just going to lead up to an autosomal recessive disorder, and what that means is that there has to be two copies of the abnormal gene to actually be expressive. The reason I explained all that is because that is exactly what methylmalonic acidemia is, so it tied back to that. Parents really don't want to see their children suffer, and so if the child actually does have methylmalonic acidemia, they could always go on sites such as CLIMB or MDDA, which are two really great sites on providing information about the disorder and helping out with it.